And I'll spark it up and I'll have a couple of big couple of tugs on it, huge great lungfuls. But all I'm smoking is tobacco because that's what I put at the front of the joint. But is it not a simple justification that you've asked me to be undercover with one of the most dangerous people in the world? I'm going to have to take a line of gear. I'm going to have to shag a brass or whatever it is. Otherwise, it just looks completely out of character. The esteemed Malod, who's sitting like as the trial judge, has probably never been in a boozer with a terrifying hoodlum and felt that he's got a hoover up a line of Charlie or two, right? <laughs> Likewise, the university-educated barristers have never been in those kind of situations. And of course, all they want to do is sow a seed of doubt in the jury's mind that you are not a witness of truth. And if they can do that, they've done their job and they'll secure an acquittal for their client. So, yes... And, and you you package it up really well, the practicalities of it, the danger of it, the situation you find yourself in. But I also used to say to the uh, trainees, when you're negotiating with these people, you really don't want to be off your nut on Charlie, on, on dope or what, whatever else it is. You don't want to be drunk because you need your wits about you. So whenever possible, don't do it. Don't take it. Make your reasons. Give an excuse if you've got to. Make sure it's legitimate. You can carry it off and it's believable. But don't do it. A lot of the time, you know, when we're sitting around and negotiating and people have pull out a, a, a lump of dope, for example, right, and they want to sit down and have a joint, you know, and understand modern jazz and eat four boxes of Maltesers, right? So, so you're sitting there... And I would, because I practiced, I practiced making joints like continually and racking up lines of powder. And these were ideas that I would give to the trainee undercover, undercover cops. If a geezer sitting over the other side of the table who I'm negotiating with pulls out a lump of resin, for example, it was predominantly resin in those days. There was bits of herbal and that. But say he pulls out a lump of resin and he's got a packet of skins, or I might have a packet of skins. I'd always carry a packet of skins, you know what I mean? I mean, cigarette papers. Just So So I'll, I'll grab his bit of gear, his bit of dope, grab his uh, grab his cigarette papers, his virulins, his skins, you know, and I'll pull a fag out, and I will build a joint, right? And if I know I've, I've been forced into a corner now, and I'm going to have to have a, a, a tug on this joint with him, well, I'm making the joint. So what I do is I backload it. In other words, at the front of the joint, which is the bit that's going to get sparked up and smoked first, I don't put any cannabis, right? But he doesn't know that. He can't see that because I'm disguising it with my fingers the way I'm doing it. So the first centimetre has not got any dope in it. And I go, I built it, I'm sparking it, right? I don't mind being perceived as somebody with, you know, not very good joint smoking manners, right? I'm here to do a deal, like, and I'm undercover cop and I want to get out of this gaff alive. So I'll say, I built it, I'm sparking it, right? And I'll spark it up and I'll have a couple of big couple of tugs on it, you know what I mean? Huge, great lungfuls. But all I'm smoking is tobacco because that's what I put at the front of the joint. All right, there might be a bit of residual as, as the heat travels down the joint through the other smoke, but it's not burning it, you know. I'm just banging on the front of it and then I just hand it round. Job done. I've not smoked a joint to all intents and purposes. He thinks I have. You know, I've also built a good joint. I mean, I could build a three skin, a five skin, a seven skin. I could build you a joint like a baby's arm. You know, like a massive great lardy doll cigar. You know, because it was part of my job. I was working undercover. I was going to be professional and know what I was doing. Likewise with cocaine. If the same sort of geezer pulls out a rapper Charlie and we're all going to have a line. Well, I go, oh, I can't stand like being on gear when I'm driving and I've got the car outside, but I'll rack up the lines and I'll go, you know, get a credit card out, get one of the old phone cards out, chop, 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 right? You're easy. Your name's Matt, okay? So I would put your lines in an M. I'd carve an M, right? It was a bit more difficult if somebody's name was Steve and, you're, and you've got to make an S, right, out of the cocaine. <laughs> but I did because I practised it. Right? Easy if it's a teeth of Terry, all of that. And people go, I've never seen it put out like that before. And all their suspicions that they might harbour about you, you know, are you an undercover cop? Are you the real deal? 
They all go when you do little things like that. And they're utterly convinced because they know you know your way around a bit of gear and you've done something that they've never seen before. I mean, you know, you say, obviously, you, you put people's um, suspicions at rest. I mean, h- how often are criminals conscious of people being undercover cops? Oh, they're totally paranoid. You know, back in the day, they were all paranoid as hell. Some of them because they're on gear, but others because they do not want to get a lengthy jail term wrapped around them. You know, and back in those days, you get nicked with a kilo of cocaine, you're going to get eight or ten just for one kilo. You know, and if you get nicked for four or five kilos, you're getting twelves and fourteens. And people didn't want that sort of bird wrap around them. So they were double double kind of suspicious and paranoid and all of that. So you have to win their win their friendship to a certain extent, you know, to put their minds at, at, at mm-hmm. ease. Um, and however you did that, yeah, crack on and do it. 